Hi, my name is Corey. I go by MovieDude18 on Twitter and Instagram, but my birth name is Corey with a K. Um, and I've been doing this series for about three years now. I started out at the New Beverly. Well, I did like American Pie, I did Power Rangers, I did Harold and Kumar. And then I started doing teen films, and you know why? I love the 90s. I love the 80s and all the I feel like movies then were a lot better, just to be honest. Um, this movie in particular, and the people that we're going to have on stage, one of us will be joining us in a couple minutes, and then afterwards, um, I really can't thank all of you enough. I'm not sure who's who or who was on my Facebook page. Who saw my Facebook page, like the event page that I ran? Okay, yeah. Okay, you guys are awesome. You got this here. You made this happen. Like, I've learned, and it's funny because I've, I've done Power Rangers a few times, and they have great fans, but I have never witnessed at 35 events without, with any of my cast or any of the crew that came a better set of respectful and fun and like caring fans. thanking me and it's like I want to thank her because she like look at how she pimped out her husband fight. and like the kids and like, <laughs> and like, like this is like you guys have sent me messages thanking me and telling me I'm awesome and, and all this stuff and for once I'm starting to believe it in my life so um you know this event is the event of events it's with people I always dreamed of, people that I aspired, people in school that I worked hard enough that I kept saying, one day I'll meet them, one day I'll collaborate with them, one day I'll work with them. And even though this is the second time I've done World Combat, we have Linda Nashby here. before I bring bring up our one of our first guests, um, that I, I do have Asperger's and part of my life is filmmaking and doing these events and part of my life is working with autistic kids because I have Asperger's syndrome. Um, but I wrote this email back in January of 2015 that was pages long. It was like it was like I, I got a hold of IMP Pro. I tried the trial and canceled it, so I didn't have to pay for the whole thing. Um, and there was someone that I did get a hold of when I looked up Paul W. S. Anderson, and someone named Sarah popped up and yeah. Impact Pictures. And um, you know, I met Paul and I wrote a fifth grade paper about how I was going to be him one day. And like, isn't that like, oh my God? Um, <laughs> But long story short, I sent her this email, and everyone was like, read this email, I was like, no, it's way too long. And I was like, but it's my heart. And she responded with her heart, and she forwarded it to Paul, and therefore I was able to start this kind of series, and now rebooting here at the Chinese, after taking a year off, this, in my wildest dreams, is the greatest thing ever. And I really <laughs> You know, there's a, a guest here that was actually demanded. Um, there was a, a guest here that I didn't have his information, and you know, Paul and Lyndon and and Robin, I've gotten to know all of them a little bit, and they're they're like the three Stooges. I say Charlie's angel, but <laughs> definitely like you know. Um, but I got tagged on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook and all these things, and it was Chris and. I sent like a couple Instagram things and I sent this and then they sent it back and eventually I just got a direct message, I got a follow and a direct message on Twitter like, yo, what is this thing that's going down? And um, I mean, right out of the gate, um, we talked on the phone for like 30 minutes and he was ecstatic, eccentric, excited to be here. And um, please, just come up here, Chris, please. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. 
So what's the code for your one, two, one, two, one two, okay. Okay, so, yeah. just hated me five minutes ago. No, Chris, so you were kind of pecked around. You were like tagged and, and how did, what, what happened? Like how did you because I do all of my own marketing pretty much. I, it's all me. But you got you got you got a hold of me and I couldn't find you. But there was a there was a guy, I don't know if that guy's here. Wayne Wilson. Yeah, where's Wayne? Wayne. Wayne. What's up, dude? I, I'm actually here because of him. Because that guy tagged me like in every post, and my whole Twitter feed blew up, my Facebook thing, I'm like, who the fuck is Wade Wilson? Like, I thought Deadpool was tagging me, I'm like, Wade Wilson. And he's got the, the Green Ranger helmet as his, as a, yeah. his sound score pen. So he's like, well, you should come to this thing, and I go, oh, okay, I'll come to this thing. And, and, I and yeah, you immediately, you and, and, and it wasn't even like, let me think about it, he was like, here's my number, let's figure this out. Like. And um, it was very late in the game, but dude, you're freaking Scorpion. <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, like, I even got him when like, he answered the phone, one of the first things I said was like, like no one's favorite, favorite for real has to be Sub-Zero, right? Like, it has to be Scorpion. There's the dad, the dad, the dad, the dad. Okay, here's the Security, clear from the shot, take the shot. Um, but no, you, you know, you, this has been, and then I looked into your Twitter and I looked into your Facebook and everything, and you have, you know, done justice to the love of the character of Scorpion, who's been around since 92, who was a fan favorite in the game. But um, were you a fan of the game taking it on, you know, back in the early 90s, before the movie, before anything happened? Yeah, actually, someone asked me this question earlier when I was, uh, before I got even a chance to, to do anything for the film, I was a big fan of the game. My favorite character was actually Raiden. Uh, Raiden, and then my second favorite was Scorpion, which was kind of cool. So uh, those were my two favorite characters when I was playing the game. Okay. Um, I talked to your wife a little bit while you were doing your autographs and stuff. Which, by the way, to, to the... <laughs> no, he's going to back, back, be me. <laughs> um, no, yes, yeah, so I was talking to wife. Um, and uh, it's funny, he told me you still own a Super Nintendo. You still own all those retro systems. And obviously you have a son, Adam. But... I, have a, yeah, I have a son and a daughter. And uh, when you when you audition for this role, you are you know you're a grandmaster when it comes to karate and martial arts, and oh, okay. you're you're I think you're all right. I, I googled you, yeah. Um, and so, how did this? Because technically, Scorpion is is kind of a stunt character, but he is a character. He's not, you know. Actually, first thing, what what the hell is in your eyes? Because someone else is wearing them too. Like, how do you? Can you see at all? I couldn't. I, I couldn't see. They uh, they made these contacts that were as big as my whole eyeball, so they covered uh, everything. So all you saw was the milky white, and uh, I could only have them in for a few hours because it would start to mess with my vision. And uh, when I had them on, I couldn't. As far as you are away, that's about as far as I could see. Wow. So yeah, it was like being in London at night. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't really see anything. Um, how did you how did you audition for this? Was what, what, what was that process? Uh, you know, Pat Johnson, the fight choreographer. I worked with him on another film, and he brought me in. I had worked on a bunch of small things, but never anything of this size. And uh, he brought me in. He goes, "We need background fighters, so we want you to come in and do some stuff." And uh, the day that I was there to audition, I I got lucky. Uh, Paul was there, and the producer Larry Kasanoff were at this this thing. There was a whole bunch of us there. And uh, I did something right, apparently, that you caught their eye. Right. I flipped right. Yeah. And uh, uh, so they asked me to come back, and we did that a couple times. And, and Paul, I, have to I tell the story all the time. Where are you at, Paul? He's right there. Right there. So it, it came down to me and two other guys uh, at, the, at the one point. And they, had a, they brought us in, and they had a camera, uh, and there was a bunch of guys who I didn't know. I, I hadn't met any of these guys, and I didn't know. The only person I knew was Pat Johnson, who was the fight choreographer. And we were standing side by side. And, uh, and they came over and they said, do you mind taking your shirt off? And I said, well, if I'm gonna get the part, then yeah, sure, of course. But, uh, to, to, and so I looked to my left, and the guy on my left, he had, a, he had kind of a little belly, and the guy on my right, he had a little belly, and I was like, <laughs> flexing as hard as I could, and they had the camera, they were looking at us, so, uh, it, and it was a surreal moment for me, Paul walked, they had like a little football hog, and then Paul walked over, and he shook my hand, he said, uh, welcome to Mortal Kombat, you're gonna be Scorpion. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. 
what your big fight scene? It, it's obviously, as I'll tell Lennon later, right now, whatever. Um, uh, I think the Johnny Cage uh, Scorpion fight scene is the best fight scene of both movies. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And just tell me a little bit about how many days that spent, how, 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 many, how many days it took, how many, I don't know, how many times did you fall over because you couldn't see off those like wooden things? How many times did Lyndon hit me in the head? <laughs> just once. Just once. Um, no, uh, we spent, uh, well, we were in Thailand for almost a month. Yeah. Well, yeah, about a month where, uh, Every day they said we're gonna we're gonna get to your fight scene. We're gonna get to your fight scene uh, every day for a month, and then like the last two days they go, oh yeah, we got to do your fight scene. <laughs> and uh, so we shot that first part in the in the jungle. And I, I don't think I'm telling it, what people don't know. So the the original uh, version of it didn't have the fight scene with Lyndon and I. It had he ran at me in the jungle, did that kick, and knocked me over. So uh, from what I was told, when they had the test screening, like the audience said, oh, was they said, no way. There's no way that he would beat him that easy. Uh, and there were literally protests, is what Larry told me. <laughs> and I tried to tell Larry, I'm like, Larry, I told you we should do a whole, we had a whole thing. Lynn and I had worked, we had spent a long time practicing, we had a whole thing. And the, in, the, in the jungle, they had these, co we were in a rubber plantation. So there were cobras that live in these rubber plantation. So in between each shot, they had these guys with drums and fire sticks that would have to come through to get the cobras out. And then they'd say, okay, you guys, it's safe, come in. And I'm looking at Lyndon, he's looking at me like, that's a cobra. <laughs> like, it's not that safe. So we'd go in there, we'd do a thing, and then, all right, cut, and then we would run like as fast as we could to get out of there. So uh, the actual fight scene we did, they shot in, uh, in, we were in Santa Monica, in an airport hangar. They built that whole set, uh, whole thing, and then we spent, another, I think it was another month, uh, doing that in uh, that fight scene there. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, I'll, be, I'll be interested to talk about that as a reshoot. That's because I go to test screenings all the time, and you would be amazed. I was talking to someone about the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, which they reshot the entire thing three times, and they still didn't get it right. Mm. Um, <laughs> but uh, and I was at all three. They didn't recognize me. <laughs> I was at all three. Um, so last thing, wrapping it up with looking back, it's 22 years later now. You just saw the best fans, the most behaved fans. <laughs> I mean, I'm judging you off of your Facebook photos and Twitter. You, you know, hey, if it's on the internet, analyst. it must be true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it just seems like you still really relish in the love of Scorpion, which is. I do. I mean, it's been a hell of a run, and the fans, you guys are awesome. Uh, it's, 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 what region loses? <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know what you're saying, but okay. <laughs> um. Well, you know, thank you so much. For seriously, Wade, dude, I, I'm glad you're a soccer. That's great. Um, <laughs> thank you. Wait, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, no, dude, thank you so much for coming out. Um, and thank you for doing this, right? We should give it up for him. <laughs> and my, one, my favorite guy, my favorite guy is, is right there. The one guy that came in the Scorpion album. <laughs> Yeah, they, they should fight. They should, we should <laughs> say, we need to find Shang Tsung right now and like, let's do this. Um, oh yeah, you asked me if you could bring the... the hey, I got a request yeah, though for you. Yeah. You know, everybody asked to take a picture of me. Can I take a picture of you guys? Yeah! Uh, is that cool? I'll put this on my Facebook thing. Yeah! Alright, smile. Hey, can you guys, can you, can you just get in a little closer? <laughs> Alright, ready? Three, two, one, big smile. Say Mortal Kombat! Mortal Kombat! Wait, someone blinked, hold on. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna film it. We're gonna film it right there. Alright, everybody, where are we right now? We're at what? Mortal Kombat! Technically we're at the Chinese theater, right? We're at the Chinese theater for the Mortal Kombat screening. There you go. Who's your favorite character? No, it's Johnny Cage. <laughs> All right, thanks, Corey. Thank you. We're gonna do a. We're gonna stop that. We're gonna flip that around like that. Hey, this looked like they censored out my face. There we go. Hi, everybody. Say hi, Corey. Hi. All right. See you on Facebook. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. All right. So here's the deal. I uh, I haven't announced it, but.
that the next month, I'm not gonna tell you what it is right now, but you're gonna see a trailer to it. Um, it's a, uh, it's a, my next event. Um, you're gonna see a trailer. I always do a trailer reel, kind of like the new Beverly, the, the new art. It's only like 11 minutes long. But um, I actually incorporated uh, a lot of Mortal Kombat stuff that I used to watch growing up and I remember on VHS tapes and stuff. And so shouts to Scott Zillner up there for some with security. Martin security on right here. He made this trailer just for me. I, I always send it over what I want to do. And I'm really proud of it. I kind of themed it. Every, every guest tonight, there's kind of a trailer that they did that isn't Mortal Kombat. And there's some ads in between. Um, once again, guys, thank you. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. The most important thing is, you're going to see a trailer at the very end, the very last trailer, um, to a film called Earthbound. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> right. I have been Facebooking it and tweeting it and getting it out there. And really the reason why tonight happened was because Robin remembered me from two years ago and apparently thought I was a, a good at like, socializing on internet media and stuff, and I guess I am, but um, no, I actually really, I haven't seen it yet, I'm super excited, but it's gonna be playing at the um, Lindley on May 12th through May 18th. Um, it's gonna be shown with another film called Mickey, and um, you're gonna see the trailer of that movie, and I wanna talk a little bit about it. I was talking to everyone in the line for an hour, because some of you guys are here hours ago. And, um, yeah, yeah. And, um, we're in the, but the last trailer you'll see, there's gonna be, it will be Robin Shu's new movie, uh, Earthbound. And, uh, it's just, and you'll see there's a very different counting things to switch up, and it, it kind of goes from, like, zombies to, like, what? Okay. To something very, very serious. Um, no, I love you guys. I love you all. I'm Corey. How'd it go? How'd you guys like that? <laughs> Best audience participation I've ever seen, it's, it, including Robin Shiv, who was apparently not happy about being shirtless too much. <laughs> we were counting budgets. No, guys, thank you guys for being here. Paul, once again, this is an honor to do this. It's Robin, and now we have Lyndon, too. Um, <laughs> Um, first thing right out of the gate, you know, I noticed a lot of people, you guys signed and were so cool about it. Um, a lot of the posters said spring 2000, and, you know, I'm mean, sorry, spring, not 2000, <laughs> spring 95. What, what happened there, Paul, with, um, and Chris had mentioned, like, reshoots, so, like, what, when, when was this originally supposed to come out? What, what, what pushed it to August? Um, they, they, uh, we made the movie for New Line. And um, who, which was run by Bob Shea at the time. And uh, Bob, uh, he had this theory, it's called the Bob Shea car crash theory of filmmaking. <laughs> That's what everyone referred to it in, in New Line. And um, he felt that a movie had to be spontaneous when you made it to really be fantastic. And if things were too organized, he would kind of like throw a car crash into the works. So what he did with us um, is he took $2 million out of the budget about three weeks before we started shooting. And you know, that, that, sucks. that was, um, you know, it wasn't a huge budget of movie, it was $21 million, um, which at the time, you know, was for what we were trying to do, wasn't, wasn't that much. Um, so we dutifully took the money out, and, uh, and then we went and shot the movie. And um, then we tested the movie that we shot, and we were told, by the first test audience, we didn't have enough action because that's what we cut out to do for two million dollars less. So we ended up shooting two extra scenes, which was the uh, Johnny Cage scorpion fight and uh, the Liu Kang um, reptile fight. Yeah. And uh, you know they're some of the best fights in the movie oh, yeah. because they were the ones that we got to spend the most time and money on because uh, <laughs> the audience had told us to go away and do it. Um, so we did, and we shot a slightly tweaked ending for the movie as well. So we just basically shot, what was it, like three extra weeks of just p people beating the hell out of one another. Yeah. And, um, and that, that's what the movie should have been. It's, it's pretty unique, because like I said, I've, I've snuck into test screenings and I've seen, usually it's because the movie needs help that they, they reshoot or maybe to spice it up a little bit, but they actually reshot it. It must have tested that incredibly well for them to say, well, yeah, we need to do better fights, but we also want to shoot a cliffhanger ending that could lead into a sequel or a franchise. Um, well, they, I mean, they definitely had high hopes for it, especially once, um, you know, once I, Robin and I showed them the plans for what this additional fighting would be. But they didn't really have a choice. I mean, it was the movie needed help. 
you know, and that's that was the great thing about test screens. And we we actually we only tested the movie twice because the second test screening went so well. I mean, it was the Hit. it was the polar opposite of the first test. The first test, the movie was in trouble, which I mean, um, you know, it was only my second film, and um, you know, both Robin and Lyndon were much more experienced than me. I mean, you, Lyndon had done like multiple big Hollywood films. And he was telling me when we shot his fight in the rubber plantation in Thailand, he's saying, you know, man, you don't have it. You know, you should, I should really be fighting for another week. And I'm like, yeah, you know, what am I gonna do? I mean, the studio's telling me, you know, we gotta go home. But you know, he was right. And, uh, and eventually we did. Say that again. <laughs> it happens occasionally. And, um, I can't believe Susan's left. <laughs> and uh, so, so we, we shot for another week, and then we shot for a week to do the um, reptile fight as well. Um, so let's actually take it back uh, to the basics. This, this is the best video game adaptation out there, I feel. Yeah. I, well, you know what you're going to do, but I feel like Mortal Kombat, is, is, it just doesn't die, which is great. Um, but up here, Lyndon, Robin, Paul, were you, you guys a fan of the game? Like. Are you biased? Is your favorite character the game Johnny Cage? Is your favorite character Liu Kang? Honestly, for me, I had no idea about Mortal Kombat. Seriously, I was working in Hong Kong. We came back here to the state for a vacation, and then they said, "Hey, you want to go in to audition for this movie, Mortal Kombat?" I go, "Oh, okay, I guess so." That's it, really. So I had no idea about the game, but I have a friend who played Liu Kang in the video game. So, oh, so, so he told me about the game. So I did play a little bit at the arcade. <laughs> I had no idea about the game. I had no I, I, I had no idea about the game. Um, I got this meeting on this film and went in and, and met these guys and the, and the cool thing about this movie is that everybody needed this one to work. I had uh, I just finished wider and it, you know, I needed this next movie, Paul needed this movie, Robin needed this movie, we all needed this movie to work. I mean, and, and we just, we, it did. We, we kind of, we caught lightning in a bottle and you don't do that very often in, uh, in your career. I mean, I can count on one hand the number of times that it's happened. And, and it just worked. I mean, the chemistry worked, the, the chemistry worked and it, I was watching it this time, very well directed. <laughs> good job, good job. Um, good job. Yeah. Your kid's gonna make some of himself. Uh, He's gonna go into space, man. Yeah, yeah, and so we, we did it. And and the funny thing is, is and we, we made this movie that worked for whatever reason that it worked, and then they they made the next one and and like got rid of Christoph, they got rid of me, they got rid of Bridget, they got rid of you know was Here's the, I'll go ahead and shoot in since you have the mic and we're talking about the second movie because I I got to know Robin a little bit and this is the only question that I really want to get into Annihilation. But why? What? I mean, there's th these DVDs for these movies. They're they're bare bones. They don't have commentaries. They don't have behind the scenes really. They don't have anything. So, you know, and I try to know everything about these movies, but what exactly was the problem with Annihilation for you to not return to John Cage? Did they try to kill you off and you yeah, didn't listen? No. Are, are, were you originally a longer part or no. a diva? Um, they, I think they tested, and I, and I think Larry Kazanoff did, I don't, I don't know that I tested that well for whatever reason, and I don't know that, that, that Bridget did. Uh, and they wouldn't honor my sequel deal, and that's right. And then he wrote this. I think that he wrote this script with with his assistant Josh, and it was like he didn't. He never kind of got that a video game and a movie are two different things. This guy understood well, no, that. I mean, that's the thing. Like with Paul, yeah. like yeah, this first movie, it's very rare. When I'm not know. bagging on Larry. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. it, yeah. I guess I am. But uh, <laughs> told yeah, you for a photo yeah, one that's uh, yeah. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't honor my deal, and he didn't 
Well, that was a stupid movie. decision. And, and, to say and he and he wouldn't honor Chris for his deal, and he, you know, did that they ask funny. you to I, do it? Yeah. Yeah. You said no. Yeah. Good. Good man. <laughs> um, he didn't. He didn't. He thought that he was the reason that the movie was successful. No, he really did. Because of the three of you and Bridget and Tennessee, yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mostly you. Yeah. Mostly you. Yeah. We'll go with that. But okay, so I think the the biggest question that a lot of fans have is: This is based on an M-rated hard. This is to go into Paul. To Paul, with with this M-rated game where I'm literally ripping off heads and tearing people in half and blood and guts. Now the games would be rated like E10 plus. Like, um, but like the originally. When you said, when you, if you came now, we had an R-rated franchise and said, oh, we're going to make it PG-13, it'd be all over Twitter, there'd be all these fanboys, all these like podcasters, bloggers, hating on it, but I think you did an amazing job of making it PG-13, but whose exact decision was that? Was that, was that partly you as a director, or? Um, no, it was, uh, you know, I was, I was brought on as a director for hire, and um, it, that decision had already been made um, before I became involved. Um, although my first meeting at New Line, I'd just flown from England, I got hired as the director, I'd auditioned for the job and I'd impressed the studio enough that I could come and direct the movie and they'd flown me into LA and I had my first meeting with Bob Shea who was running the studio and he looked at me, this room full of studio executives and said, why the fuck are we making this picture? <laughs> like, um, and I, I, it came as a surprise to me because it sounded like he didn't really want to make it. And he said, you know, the game's very violent and, and this movie's, it's not very violent. What are you doing? And I'm like, ah, and all these decisions, of course, have been made before I became involved. And, um, you know, I, I felt, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a truism that people say, sometimes the things you you imagine are much more powerful than things you can show. And that's what we tried to do with this. You know, we tried to suggest things. We tried to suggest the, the brutality and the violence of the video game. Because even if you'd made it an R-rated movie, you could never have got on screen the kind of things no, that, that are in the NC video game. I mean, it would have been a, like an NC-17. You would never have got it into cinemas. Yeah. And, um, and I, I was a fan of the video game. I played it in the arcades. Yeah. And I... Although I wasn't the best player, so I didn't get to a lot of the fatalities, to be honest. You just did the same special and I did, over and over. I just kind of like waggled everything really fast and hit things. And, um, but I really enjoyed the visceral thrill of playing and the combat. That's what I remember. I remember the combat more than the fatalities. And I thought that's what the movie's about. The movie's about these great characters, because I knew there were characters from the game. And it's about the fighting. And that's what we delivered on screen. And, um, you know, we didn't have all of the fatalities and spinal columns coming out. But ultimately, it didn't matter because that, I don't think, is what the video game is about. And that's certainly not what the movie had to be about. And as Lyndon said, they're two different things. You know, you've got to make a movie. You can't just slavishly try and put the video game on screen because that just never works. I, I feel like a lot of that wouldn't work in, in a movie anyway, like ripping out someone's spinal cord on camera. Just kind of would be more of a Belko experiment than a, you know, <laughs> Well, and, and what, it, what everyone forgets also is that this was the first successful adaptation of a video game to movie. And there had been Mario Brothers, there had been Street, Street Fighter, Fighter. But those movies were terrible. Street Fighter, <laughs> Double Dragon. Um, and those were huge video games. So they were huge video games. And nobody, nobody thought this thing was going to be successful. Nobody. I mean, they... The week's they, number one. That's why I got to direct it. Yeah, that's why I got this car, you know, That's why we got to be... It's, I'm, I'm serious. They, they really, they did not think this was going to work. And it's like, yeah, you know, they were, they were surprised. And it was number one for three weeks, three weeks yeah. which is unheard of nowadays. And yeah, I mean, we we showed them. So, Robin, you were actually, if you pay attention to the credits and Paul kind of material, you have worked on the choreography right. for the questions. Oh, yeah. How much and to what extent and what scenes did you help work on with him? Did you work directly with Paul or with Paul? Oh, yeah. Paul? I mean, I worked with Paul very closely. I mean, I know exactly what Paul wants. I think by that time it was towards the end of the movie, so I got to know Paul really well. And he is a fanboy of the game. 
He really liked He's a huge, film. awesome nerd guy. You know, yeah, exactly. So, and he loved the movie because it's almost like I can say this. Every day I go to work, Paul would say, Robin, come here and look at this set. Oh my God, I can't believe this set. <laughs> and then, and then, oh, man, no, they're no, practical. You don't no, get that easy. No, exactly. So, every day he was so excited. So, I, I mean, how can you not get excited with him? Exactly. So then, so when we had a chance to reshoot the fight scene, you know, I was excited. So I would go to Paul every day with some ideas and say, yeah, and then we would study films and we would study the type of martial arts we wanted to use. Um, so I, uh, we were very fortunate um, to do the Johnny Cage, Scorpion, and Liu Kang so Reptile. you did choreograph. I choreographed the fights, yeah. Wow. So, um, but I, I, I told Paul, I said, you know, if this movie's about fights, you can't stop and break. No. You know, like six in a row. Because because like in a video game, game, you don't stop and wait a minute. I need a breather. You can't pause. It's you actually can't. a cheat code exactly. to pause so in the game. That's why the, the fight needs to be very kinetic. And and I remember Lyndon when we were doing the Scorpion fight. I said, Lyndon, you're gonna have to get hit. And he said, Are you kidding me? And, you know. And then no, no, no. But you're gonna look so good. Really. <laughs> so I think some of the shot that you saw Lyndon get hit in the face is actually. All real. Oh yeah. All real. I got, I got kicked so hard in the kidneys. I got, I got kicked so hard in the kidneys. It doesn't look like anything on screen. It's like I get my, I go down that railing and 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 just this axe kick comes in and I had the pad, but like always, it you know if you get you got pads all over your body because I feel like this much, guess where you get hit, and and just like. Oh my God, it hurt. Uh, yeah, and you know, like it, it, you know, I did, I did have, did. I had a great double. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not a great martial artist. I'm, a, you know, you're a great martial artist. I'm, I'm an okay. I'm like a, yeah, but uh, it, uh, you know, but you forget like Goro. You know, he wasn't CGI. He was a big animatronic puppet that never fucking worked. I mean, this thing would there was there was some poor guy in the bottom of it. And and they would stick him in this suit and they'd like stick an air hose in there and he couldn't see anything. I think he had a little did he have a TV screen? He had a TV screen and they'd stick him in there and they'd be like, all right, dude, you got your hair? And he'd be like, and then they, they like yank the air hose out and they go, okay, he's got a minute. And then, and then he'd be running around and they'd be like, mm, mm, mm. And, he, and he's in the dark and he can't breathe. And then the thing on top, the beast, would, would break. And it'd just sit there, like, it would overheat and then just start going, I, 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 And then we'd have to like cool him off. And they'd have to work on it. He'd just sit around for hours with that thing. And they'd be like, yeah, but look, his eyes dilate. Like, it was horrible. Now, uh, I'm, I've done this with Paul and Robin, as I said, you're a new addition to it, but I'm getting the feeling that you actually didn't have to play that much of a stretch to play no, Tony Cage. No, did no, you? no, pretty close. <laughs> um, yeah, we, I mean, Came up with a lot of those lines. Yeah, yeah no, you, you came up. With yeah, the, the the screenplay the screenplay we started out with didn't have any humor in it whatsoever, and um, and I we I felt humor was very very important. So I worked very hard with with Lyndon and uh, with Christoph as well to add humor to the screenplay, and so much so that at one point Lyndon met the writer at a party about a year <laughs> after the movie came down. out, and the movie had been a huge hit. And the writer came up to Lyndon and said, he introduced me to his wife or his girlfriend, I don't know which one. And he goes, this is Lyndon Ashby. And she goes, how oh, nice to meet you. He goes, yeah, this is the guy who fucking ruined my movie. Wow. Um, so I was but, I, but just to you know, circle back on the, the second Mortal Kombat movie, it's one of the reasons I felt it really hurt the film because that humor I thought was very, very important to, to the movie we made together. And I thought it was something that was kind of sorely lacking or didn't hit the mark in the second film. Well, something that I had brought up at the, at the last screening, speaking of the script, was um, 
there, there was quite a few scenes I, I looked through it last night um, with, uh, you know, Luke Hang and Katana. You guys originally didn't wait until the sequel to make out. Um, and why did that get cut, or did they film and they're just nowhere to be found? Well, I have no idea. I, didn't. I, I really have no idea. I mean, they just say, hey, kiss her. Okay. <laughs> um, Robin, when you were kind of put in the spotlight in this film, as you said, it was kind of like everyone was against it, no one thought it'd be this huge deal. You know, in the mid '90s, uh, it was a huge deal to have someone who wasn't, just say, Caucasian, be a leading actor on the billboard on the front page at the, at the video store. He was the cutout, you know. And you're not American. How was that to take it in as an action star from oh. from a stuntman's perspective to being a lead character who's, you know, I fighting mean, for the fate of the world? I mean, I, I, I didn't. I didn't really think about it because you know it's 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 a movie and I've been acting for nine years. I mean it's, it's exciting to be in America, my first American movie. Um, but I didn't think of what what kind of impact will it have? You know, honestly, I, I did not. Um, not until like people would come up to me on the street and and want me to sign the album. <laughs> and I go, wow, you carry your elbow? Yeah. I think you have it, if, if you recall, the, the gold, because it went triple platinum. Yeah. And you have it like and in so, your wallet. So your I, it, it didn't really hit me. So then, um, and after that, I go, wow, this is pretty cool. And that's it. So I didn't really think too much about it. And when, and this is for all three of you guys, and now when you look back at it 22 years later, um, like, Lyndon, I feel like even looking at your Twitter page, it's like, Teen Wolf, Johnny Cage. Like I just feel like I feel like you really do hold this movie as a very dear place in your heart. Is that Absolutely. for both you and Robin? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is this is this, this the one. film that you get when like people come up to you and are you know? Yeah. Do you just get this one. All the time, this one has got like people love this movie. I love this movie. Uh, and, and this movie has got. A, Really special place in a lot of people's hearts, and and we like you know, we went and made this video game movie that it just kind of went out there and got a life of its own, and it's still alive and kicking. And uh, yeah, all the time, airports, you know, restaurants, Johnny Cage, it's like, <laughs> I'm just sunglasses. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how many? Those are five hundred dollars sunglasses, that's <laughs> You know, for so many people. It's uh Yeah. Was Paul was a part of this movie, obviously it is a video game adaptation. Um but when when you actually made it, did you have an intent to sort of not, like commercialize it towards not just fans of the video game, but also for just a common audience? Because I feel like if you look, if you do look at two, it's like total like Molina's there for five seconds, Cyrus is there for five seconds. But there's actually character development in the first one. So was it meant to just be for the fans, or was there an option of like let's actually? Make it's this it's kind of... it's for both. I mean, I think yeah. you um, when you do a video game adaptation or an adaptation of anything really, you have to walk a fine line because you have to please the hardcore fans who love the original source material, but then you have to. You have to make a movie that works for the people who don't know that source material from a hole in the head. Uh, and you need to make it work for both audiences without alienating either one. And I think in a lot of video game movies, they're so intent on pleasing the fans and being slavish to adapting exactly the video game, a mainstream audience go, I don't really think this is for me. I don't really know that world. Um, and we tried to make something that you know, was for everybody. And, um, you know, I always saw the movie, I mean, I love the video game, but I saw the movie as kind of a mashup of Enter the Dragon and um, yeah. Jason and the Argonauts. Yeah. You know, some of my favorite, you know, my favorite martial arts movie meets my favorite kind of mythic monster movie. And, uh, and that's what I set out to make um, through the lens of Mortal Kombat. I, I think you did that, and I also think you've done that with other video game adaptations. I think you've done a brilliant job of taking what's really cool about the game or certain bits and parts and mixing in something that is a little bit more commercialized or a bit different, or um, you know, that, that, that suits, I think, a bigger spectrum. Um, you know, so, uh, but Mortal Kombat, where in this billion dollar franchise you've made, and Event Horizon, and Soldier, and 
when Fox just totally screwed you over with ADP. But um, where does Mortal Kombat rank? Where, where does, I mean, I feel like you're always, like, this is the second time I've watched it with you talking to Robin about you, talking to Sarah about you. It sounds like this was. Like I, it's your... one of. I mean, it's one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite, because it's the movie that, that kind of like started. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have made any of those other movies you mentioned without Mortal Kombat. You know, I was uh, fresh off the boat, and I was this young director from England. And uh, if this movie hadn't worked, I'd have been sent back to England with my tail between my legs, <laughs> and I, I wouldn't have had a career there because that, you know, everyone in England would have been, oh, oh, you went to Hollywood and it didn't work. Oh, darling, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, you're not working At least here it was either. Better than Street Fighter. That'd be like um, the best compliment. That doesn't work in England. Being better than Street Fighter doesn't mean anything. That that and five pounds will get you a cup of tea. Um, so you know, and and. And also, I met friends for, you know, for my life, you know, it's, it's very rare that you make a movie and you walk away with as many friends, uh, you know, really close personal friends as I have from this film. Yeah, and, and that's why I remember uh, the, one of the greatest moments in, in living in L.A. for eight years was when I did Mortal Kombat. And I had joked and I said, when was the last time you and Robin just had a beer? And you sent me that email that was, like, I pinned it on my wall, my roommate can attest it's on my wall that, you know, you built friendships. You, I mean, he's friends still with Sandra Hess from Annihilation and everything, and that is the coolest factor about doing this event, is knowing that not only do the fans all unite, but you as a cast, still 15, 20, 22 years later, I called Sarah, and Sarah was, she's like, oh, Lyndon just popped over Phobia. And I was like, that's awesome, you know? Um, but yeah, so 22 years later, we have this movie and... Drinking beer is a very big part of what we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I once suggested to Robin that we go work out together. Close. And he said, I work out enough. Let's meet and drink beer. I can have one beer. I hit the gym six times this week. We'll have one beer. But let's actually turn it over to Robin for just a second before we're going we're gonna to head out to the audience. Um, Robin, what, you didn't, I didn't get, we didn't get to you with the question, where... Does Mortal Kombat in the career of stunt films, documentaries? Now you have your first directing writing feature coming out. Um, where where does Mortal Kombat rank? I mean, it's one of my favorite movies also because just because we have such a great relationship. I mean, you guys can see. The, the you know, Lennon was throwing like, popcorn at Paul. I, mean, I, I miss <laughs> these guys. No, I mean, I miss them so much. And I think why the movie worked was because all of us were very honest and authentic to our character. And then we really loved the movie, so we were going to work every day excited. And of course, I remember Paul saying, like, when we were in Thailand, saying, how great is this, with his English accent, we ride a boat to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, mean, how, I heard about that. How, 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 often, <laughs> how often do you get to ride a boat and go to work, to these beautiful <laughs> islands, beautiful beaches, and then you go to work? You remember sitting in that breath? We had to sit, we'd, we'd like wait in this restaurant for the boats to come in the morning, right? Yeah. And then the monkeys would come. <laughs> I'm not making this up. The monkeys would come and, they, and it was like open, it had this opening, this big square opening in the room, and the monkeys would come and they'd come down and you're like, holy shit, right. <laughs> this is gonna end badly. And they'd be like around you looking and you're like, Here's the boat. <laughs> um, so before we turn to the audience, everyone, I kind of, when you were lined up, I gave you um, kind of a flyer card um, that had two movies on it, Earthbound and Mickey. Um, and this is your first big crowd. Uh, it's my, my first narrative, yeah. Yeah, your first narrative. And tell us a little bit about this film that's going to be, it's, where is it going to be playing? And Well, it's going it's to be at the Lemley Pasadena um, on the week of May 12th, a Mother's Day weekend. Uh, through the 18th, and and during your birthday, is it? Uh, kind of, <laughs> but um, um, what was that? Uh, you're talking about Earthbound, and you're oh, okay, it. okay. Uh, no, no, it, it's um, it's 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 uh, one of those um, project that is re really personal to me because I think right after Mortal Kombat, I, I developed this passion for Southeast Asia. I mean, I love that part of the world, the culture, just the people. I mean, they were all uh, soft-spoken. Um, everything was just so nice. So when I heard about the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, I mean, at first, you know, because living in the States, you don't really hear about um, news of other countries. Um, so then I did some research and realized that 250,000 people died from the tsunami, and, and 
one third of it were children. So then that really broke my heart and I sort of did some more research and I go, wow, this is a really powerful story. So I start writing. And then I go, wow, after I finish, I should really shoot this. So that's what I did. So this is a really a, a passion project. So it's a short film. Um, yeah, it's 26 minutes? It's about 22 minutes. Oh, 22 minutes. Um, and so it'll be playing at the Lemley Mona, Pasadena, Lemley, Pasadena yeah. May 12th to the 18th. Yeah, and it's, it's a, kind of like a big deal because um, theater don't really want to show short film. No. So then I think they read it, they, they sort of, they, they feel this will work. And because Lemley's an art house theater, so then um, they decided to book it. And I was, but only for matinee though. So I said, oh, I don't care, matinee's good, I'm, I'll take it. So I, I think I'm very fortunate that they booked the film. Yeah. No, you know, I can tell I, I, I got a text from Robin randomly, I didn't have his number, and it said, um, I got your number from Sarah, this is Robin Shu. And I woke up and my roommate, I just kind of screamed, and I'm like, what? Dude, like Robin Shu just texted me, and like, then you, you, I saw the trailer and I researched the film and stuff, and it seems like it's a very important film. You definitely have your heart invested in it, and I certainly will be there. That Sunday, you, you said, is a good day for... Yeah, right? Sunday. Sunday, the... Um, so Mother's Day, the, the, yeah. because the film's about mothers. <laughs> All right, and let's do some questions from here. All right, yeah, Hey, guys, uh, you're awesome. This has been really great. Um, so, one of my favorite things about this movie, besides the three of you and Robin's hair in the movie... How much is right, mine? Right, he's got great hair. <laughs> I mean, when he came up, and it was like... I was like, ooh. And the first time I met him, he was like, it was as short as Paul's. Yeah. And that was in Thailand. It was so hot. It was, it was perfect. And also, now, I'm sure you know that Paul directed um, the first Death Race, right? Of course. Yes. So um, he asked me, Robin, you know, I have this amazing part for you in Death Race. Um, but we need to shave your hair. <laughs> I go, yeah, anything. Anything's fine. You work with Paul again? So, yeah. That's why I knew because Lyndon is actually, I don't know why I call him the Apple Power, but he falls and <laughs> dies in uh, Resident Evil 3, Extinction. And they, he recasted these people. That's like the coolest thing ever. Like, yeah. That, that's just super cool. So, um, so, so my question was, okay. uh, so what, my other favorite part of the movie is Trevor Goddard as Kano, because he's just he's an incredible character actor. Yeah. Um, and obviously he you know, passed away a while ago. So do, was there any interesting stories or tidbits about working with him? I mean, I love him as an actor. Uh, he was, um, Trevor was a force of nature. I mean, he was like that guy he was playing, Kano. He also played a pirate in Pirates of the Caribbean. That guy was a pirate in the best possible way. And uh, before we did Mortal Kombat, he had been in the same uh, villages in Thailand shooting this Dolph Lundgren movie, Men of War, I think it was called. And everybody knew him. Like every person who ran a bar, every woman, I mean, everybody seemed to know Trevor. It was like the return of the king when he went back to Thailand. Um, okay, guy dressed as Scorpion. Yeah. Uh, first of all, the movie had a very big impact on me. I worked at a movie theater uh, when it came out, and our bosses said, put it in the little house because it's not going to sell. It was selling out night after night. I moved it to our big house, and so uh, congrats on that. This movie also, I was telling uh, Chris earlier, this is what inspired me to start martial arts. I always, uh, It was always fascinating to me, but uh, it was always untouchable. So... You guys got me in the dojo, thank you, changed my life. Other question for you, and this is I guess for anyone who can answer, uh, Robin, phenomenal fight scene with Reptile. Where the hell was Johnny? What were you doing? Yeah, yeah dude, you didn't even have his back. Like, did you even come to film for that? His kidneys hurt. <laughs> well. Tana shows up, so you know I'm kind of like, wait a minute. Here. The truth of the matter is, is that uh, we shot in Fontana. That's that that was the old Kaiser steel mills, and now it's the racetrack. Um, and we shot out there, and that's where you did you grab? Was Reptile even there no, then? No. He wasn't even there. So yeah, we're walking, and, and it's like, do you hear it? I'm like, what, what, or whatever, and then. 
And then I think I was in Fontana and he was on a set in Van Nuys Airport. So I couldn't get there. I don't know. I was watching this time. It never bothered me before. Tonight I'm like, geez, I don't know where to have his back, did I? You go get him. You got it? Uh, yeah, I agree with what Corey said earlier. By far the best video game adaptation to a movie of all time. Period. Yeah, thank you. Um, my question for Paul is, did you ever have any other Mortal Kombat characters in mind to have in the movie? Um, we were doing Jade. There was supposed to be a fight with Jade in the script. It's in the script. Yeah, but, maybe. I mean, yeah. Uh, and then they ruined her in the script. <laughs> I don't remember. I mean, we, it was always, I mean, these were the most popular characters from the game, you know, um, Lou, Johnny, Raiden. And I knew that because I played the game in arcades and you just saw what people wanted to play. I don't know if many people wanted to play Jade. So I don't think it was any great loss. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I've, I've told this story before and I'll tell it again. You know, I got this part and I thought, Finally, I'm working with an Asian guy and two women. I'm gonna be the tallest guy there. <laughs> Cause I'm not that tall. And I'm like, for once. And then I get on set and I go, God damn. It's like I look at Robin and I'm like, ah! And then these two models come in. And they're like, I'm like can I get some lifts in my shoes? It's, yeah, yeah, you would think, why not? I should be the tallest, and I wasn't. Again. Yeah. If so, so, Lyndon, you said you weren't like a martial arts guru. How, like, how much of training do you have to do for the movie, or was it all stunt? No, I I uh, I boxed quite a bit growing up, and I and I had studied a little bit of karate, and but I was pretty good. My hands were pretty good, um, and I was a pretty good athlete, and we trained for three months. Yeah, I think, and uh, and I and I really enjoyed martial arts and and kind of continued afterwards. So, um, no, I I I don't think I had a double until the scorpion fight. I mean, yeah, we didn't double that. Did we? No. Um, Can you do the splits? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I cannot. And now, for sure, not. Uh, yeah, I can I can bend down maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think one of the reasons why people feel this movie holds up was because there's not a lot of visual effects in fighting. I mean, you, this is what this is this is what it is. Everything is real. Everyone is. I mean, I mean, we were tired. We were really tired. But then we had fun. We had really really amazing fun. I mean. It's just that, you know, it's all worth it. Again, I think Paul is saying, like, this is, oh, Lyndon was saying, like, this is our chance to do um, a, a big movie. It had to work. And also, it's fantastic that we have a great relationship. So we would go to work, like, happy every day, every day. And so, um, yeah, I think that's, and you can see that on the screen because Lyndon is Johnny Cage and I am the king. I mean, it's just that, you know, I mean, it's, it's, there's no thinking. I, I just talk about doubles. So, in that scorpion fight, there is the the worst injury or the most pain I think I saw. Well, Robin got pretty racked up in that in that in that reptile fight. Uh, but it was that guy Tatsuro. Tatsuro. And he did the flip, and then. You watch, and his shins, his shins hit on this bar. <laughs> and I mean, I'm like there, I'm just going, oh my god. <laughs> and this is like a guy who would, you know, right now, halfway, just, now I don't need a pad, and he'd just fall flat on his back off this stage, he'd jump and just land right on the concrete. And he hit on <laughs> his shins so hard, I thought his shins were actually going to break and like just go like this. And yeah, he, he couldn't do any more after that. And then who was the gymnast who came? Was it like oh, Mitch Gaylord? And he's swinging around and I'm like, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys the last question right here? Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, so in the trailer, there's this scene where Robin says, 
You can't run from me, Shang. And Carrie goes, I don't need to run. <laughs> and that gets cut. And um, there's also a rumor I was hearing somebody tell me about earlier today, actually, that the scene where Sub-Zero fights against that masked guard and he freezes and shatters him, there was supposed to be, uh, like opposite to that, a scene where Scorpion uh, does like a toast speak fatality to another masked guard. And of course, in the sequel, there is this entire thing with Quan Chi that's, that gets axed. Yeah. And what about all these deleted scenes? Is there a, some, are, are there archives somewhere? Because I got the movie on DVD and Blu-ray and even Laserdisc, and there's never like a deleted scene in there. Yeah. If, if there was action, it's in the movie. You know, we didn't have, we didn't have the kind of budget where we could shoot whole big action scenes and just not stick it in the film, you know. My whip chain on the beach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that we could cut, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely like my, that was my biggest question, I, and I just forgot to ask it, but like, like yeah, especially with, even with the second movie, like Quan Chi is listed in the credits, but he's not in the movie, and there's an ending that was shot, there's a still of it. And I wondered that too about the trailer. What, why, why, there is, is there anything at all deleted that- There's Lyndon's whip chain scene. Whip chain? <laughs> was, was that- yeah, It was on the beach, it was, I remember that vividly. It was so romantic and beautiful, and they shot it so much, and, and I was oiled up, and, and it, was, it was probably too beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> in my heart and in my memory forever and I'm sure in, in Paul's too and Robin's alright I'll, I'll do one more this guy way in the back um, waving his hand or I'm sorry yeah in the blue with the black idea uh, question what scene took the most takes mm -hmm. ooh that's good what scene took the most takes is there something that you just loved, Lyndon or Robin, that you just couldn't get right, and you no. just had to get like, because we don't even I, have a blooper reel or yeah, outtakes I mean, or I anything. I remember one shot that I did 10 takes on. Um, it was the shot where I get flung and hit this pillar. Oh, no, of course. Um, I wasn't happy with, with you. He was, I know, he wasn't happy. He said, Robin, you can hit harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think by the 10th take, I was really exhausted, so then I missed the pillar and hit the edge of the pillar. And I think was uh, your ribs. because my rib, I cracked, I fractured two ribs with that. So that was the most take I remember. So, but you know, it's it's only ribs. Can you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> That's what Paul said. Can you do it again? Like we need to find the linen, like Ashby whipping chains and like put a Willow Smith song to it and like I whip my chains back and forth. Um, <laughs> um, no, that's it, you guys. Like, listen, I'm once again. I'm Corey. Um, I'm at Movie Dude 18. I will be back here with Paul on May 16th at 8 p.m. Um, in that, when I say 8 p.m., it'll probably start at 8:30 the next day. Um, but uh, no, I wanted. We wanted to make sure everyone got signed in photographs, and I think everyone did. And I, I hope you guys were happy. This was. This was definitely. My favorite event. I'm I'm usually more nervous. I'm usually a little bit more stuttery than I am, but uh, I think it's because I'm home right now. This is this this feels right. So um, I love you all and thank you all for coming. Thank you.